Hey everyone, Dashian Miller, and we're here with another Whiteboard Wednesday. Got all decked out for this one, but I'm wearing my glasses so I can be all studious for everybody, right? So anyway, uh, jumping right into this, uh, this uh, the theme for this one, and of course this uh, upcoming uh, Friday's virtual training is on pressure points, which is a really sucky translation for these things, right? We have to remember that however we define something, that, that, becomes a linchpin, right? That becomes kind of a crux to how we think about everything else. It's kind of like, I don't know, um, on the success path, on the life mastery path of things, right? If we think that something is impossible for us, right? We can think it's impossible all the way around, right? But if we think it's impossible, that belief will condition everything else that happens. What the hell do I have on me? <laughs> Easily distracted, right? Okay. It'll condition everything, right? If we think it's possible, we're going to find ways to make things happen, right? So we have to be careful with these translations, right? I don't care if it's whether we're translating like the nin symbol, right? And, you know, and it's one thing to, to uh, you know, be able to look at something and go, oh, well, that's nin, right? I mean, that's a ninja, a ninja two, a ninpo. And, yeah, okay, but, but, okay, but do you get it? Yeah, yeah, it means to persevere, it means to endure. Yeah, okay. So uh, there's another kanji. Uh, it means the same thing. I have a piece of artwork somewhere. I think I might have shared it uh, a couple of episodes ago um, where it says nin nin. Okay. To be able to persevere, persevering. Right. A lot of people have this in their head, but in their heart, they're incapable of persevering. Okay. They're incapable of, of enduring the challenges and the hardships and the shit that's necessary to live that. Right. So anyway, I digress. Or maybe I didn't. Right. But understanding that that, you know, where, where the hell did the how, how does that mean uh, to persevere or to be patient or whatever? Right. Because another translation, the Japanese translation to that is uh, stealth to enter in, to steal in, uh, you know, stealthily and, and things like that. Right. But there, there's like the, the kanji on top. Right. Oops. Sorry. I write these things too fast. Right. That. People tend to translate this as toll, blade, right? But it's not. Toll is that. As soon as we add that stroke to it, we point to the working part of the blade, the sharpest, most dangerous part of the blade. Okay? Everything changes. Okay? Somebody could point a weapon at me, but if it's if it's not loaded, if it's if they're too far away or whatever, point all day long, right? It's not the weapon. There's a lot of other things. There's proximity, all those kind of things, right? Okay. But there's that. And then there's this sheen or kokoro part, right? This part right here. Okay. Our heart, our core, right? What makes me, me, right? So where this comes in is even though the enemy holds his blade at my heart, I'll persevere. I'll endure. The secondary translation of patience is the recognition that sometimes I can't freaking move and I'm going to need to wait for a good time. Right. Some of these guys that are like, you got all my skills, man. Somebody does shit. I'm going to, well, you know what, what's that old uh, Shakespearean thing, right? Uh, something like Igor, we knew him well, <laughs> something like that. Right. Okay. And I think, I think we've talked about the, the, um, the, uh, Bu kan mu or bu kanji for marshal, right? And how it really paints a picture of a freaking battle going over uh, arrows flying over a, a castle abutment, and then you have uh, this other kanji that's inside of it that means to cease or stop, right? So there's this hidden meaning for the job of warrior, which is to cease conflict, right? Same thing kind of happens with with this term for that everybody's running around going pressure points, pressure points. I want to learn pressure points. Okay, fantastic, right? So a whole bunch of stuff behind this, right? So the word is Kyusho. Kyusho does not literally mean pressure points. 
Okay. For all the purists out there in the world, right? You want to find my purity center. It's not what everybody believes is going on. And so we have to do that officially, right? Um, to be modern day ninja or Bujinkan practitioners or whatever, right? Um, I actually thought about just like wearing this one, one t-shirt that one of my students gave me that has the Bujinkan on it or whatever, but I don't want to piss people off. Not that I don't already anyway, right? But they want to be purist about these things. So what they want to do is they want to do 13th or 15th or whatever century stuff right out of the Shoninki or the, or the Bansan Shukai or whatever, right? In 21st century America. And I'm not saying that the skills and techniques and tactics and all that don't apply, but we're going to have to figure out how they apply and where they apply. Because I don't know where you live, but where I live, people aren't walking around with two damn swords in a belt wearing a kimono and carrying a spear or a halberd or whatever. And if they are, what, are they at a freaking um, uh, Society for Creative Acronism uh, kind of event or, they, or a, a Ren Fair or something like that, right? Or, right, um, I'm not knocking how people want to live, but let's face the facts, right? So, you know, we need to be able to look into the Ninja no Hachimon, right, and, and see these skills and then go, okay, all right, so Shuriken Jutsu is there. And soul jutsu, right? Spear is there, and kenjutsu is there. Sword, right? Okay, great. Um, then you got other people running around going, "See, nobody's carrying shuriken and spear and swords, dude." So freaking get a life, right? Jump on the MMA bandwagon and let's go, right? But what are they? What are they pointing out, right? One, the technology of the day, and two, a long range, close range, and mid range weapon. Ah. Oh. I better be able to handle that stuff, right? So what is the long-range, mid-range, and close-range weapons of today? That kind of thing, right? How do we convert this so that we still keep the principles and concepts going? But anyway, right? So Kyusho, Kyusho doesn't mean pressure point. Pressure points or what we think of as pressure points and the way we think about them is in there. But right? Kyusho means weak point. Weak point, weak points, Japanese, they, they don't pluralize things, right? You have to understand the context when you're speaking, right? So weak points, right? Sensitive points. What the hell, right? So um, does that mean that, you know, if I if I press on something and it causes pain to the guy that, uh, you know, that's, that's not a pressure point? You can call it whatever you want. Just make sure you're clear about what it is that you're talking about, all right? I'll use the term pressure points, like when I put all this stuff out to everybody, I use the term pressure points because that's what 90% of, of the folks out there trying to learn this stuff know them as, right? But that's also the same term that's limiting 98.9% .9 of those 90% to a small category of things, and they could really ramp up their freaking um, their skill set, their skill proficiency, the level of power in a technique, and the level of control. Right. That's one of the focuses of, of this Friday's virtual training that we're going to be doing uh, this week. We're going to take a look at techniques that you already know or may already know. And we're going to look at inserting the use of Kyusho, right, to make it work better or to break his strength or resistance or whatever. Right. So you can do things traditionally all you want, but if it's not working. It's not working. Okay. So in some of the text and, and lessons and all that that Hatsumi Sensei has put out over the years, right, uh, one of the books from a long, long time ago, Togakure Ryu Ninpo Taijutsu, right? Um, we typically, uh, the teachers tend, tend to see it as the Tenshi Jin Yuraku no Maki, right? These three uh, levels of, uh, of skill set. We call it the Shidoshi Scroll. Call it whatever you want, right? But uh, in there, he talks about there being two types. And again, you're going to hear me say two types, four types, five types, whatever, right? Keep it in context, right? So two types of Kyusho. One is on him. The, these are, are weak points that I'm concerned about on the on my assailant's body that I can use to gain control, break him down, those kind of things, right? But there's a second type of Kyusho on me, okay? Yes, I know I have all the same ones that he has that he could use on me, but we're talking about ones that I want to be concerned about that increase or improve mobility, and uh, resuscitate, right? So if I'm restricted, things happen or whatever, you choked out, whatever. How do you bring somebody back? That kind of thing, right? So not covering that kind of stuff today, uh, but I am going to cover things from two other uh, directions. Main point is I want to look at at breaking the Q show, the, the, the weak points down into four different categories 
in how they get attacked, right? So the human body has lots of weak points, but how do they get accessed, right? So if we're only focusing on things that, you know, we press on and he ouchies and flinches or whatever, and then I could do some other cool trick. Okay. One, that's only 25% of all these points. And while some you can press on, uh, you know, other ones you have to do other things too. Uh, and it's not like these other ones, I can't do the same thing. I can't press on or whatever, but how I attack it changes the response I get from him. Okay. So let's, let's back up before that, right? I'm going to give you uh, four other ways of looking at things. And, and Hatsumi Sensei describes these. Uh, there might be five, but I'm going to, I'm going to throw four of them at you um, in this Togaku Review, uh, Nippon Taijutsu kind of thing, right? Um, what we're going to look at, starting off with the way most people think of, right? When pe most people think of pressure points, what do they think of, right? I'm going to pretend I'm like one of these kids shows where I'm asking you a question. I'm going to wait for you to answer. That's right. No, <laughs> anyway, right? Like I can actually hear you, right? So what everybody focuses on is the creation of pain, right? So there's first category, right? Creation, uh, uh, creation of pain, right? And that's where I start my students as well, right? In mod one, uh, we're looking at, you know, hitting this Nagare point or, or Hoshi or whatever, right? But you know what? I have a student in my class who's 19 years old and she has some kind of a neurological thing going on, not like goofy or whatever, but it's, it's a nervous system kind of thing, right? And pressure points, this type of pressure point doesn't affect her. There's no response, right? So the, the backup that I give folks when they're learning a pressure point technique in mod one, like a, a grab release or whatever, where they're hitting this point and it makes them, makes them it's supposed to make the other person let go, right? Is you don't keep stabbing at it and going, does that work? Does that hurt? Does that hurt? Okay. You're going to get jacked, right? So what I tell everybody is, look, you hit it half a second. You don't get any response, but you go off into something else, right? You hit them. You don't, don't hang out on this thing, right? But that's where most people hang out. 99.8% of people that are focusing on pressure points, that's what they think of. I'm going to get pain compliance. I learned as a police officer a long, long time ago that if somebody's jacked on drugs, alcohol, pain meds, I guess that's drugs, right? Uh, trauma, whatever. I'm going to feel this. Okay. So that way, right? Okay? If this is all I think of, I better hope that I've got somebody that's wired well and not inhibited and right. Kind of weird kind of crap going on, right? Again, this is just effect. So this is supposed to be an in the moment, immediate kind of thing, right? Next one, right, is also in the moment, right? But we're going to label this one temporary, temporary immobilization, right? It may or may not hurt, but it causes them to, to kind of hang out. Uh, in in Hudson says when he's teaching in the best way he converts it into English, it's like creating a, a momentary state of suspended animation, right? Not that they freeze literally, right? But their body kind of gets hung up on itself, Okay. Uh, we were just working a technique last night from the Gilko school uh, where you hit these two points above the, the pelvic ridge back here, right? Down and in, right? And they really don't hurt, right? Not in the way most people think of. Like if I hit Nagade right here or I hit Hoshi right here, it freaking hurts, okay? But I'm coming across the top of the pelvic ridge and down and the way it hits the connector tissue, it causes the knees to buckle and now the knees get out and under the person and they right? The moral response happened with the arms going out. They kind of hang out in it, in it for the people who want classical stuff, right? In that moment with him here, I could kick him over. I could do all kinds of things. Or remembering that during that era, I would have had at least one, if not two swords on my belt. So when I parry that kick and I come in and I could do one or both, but if I jam the, the, the hilt of the sword into that point to drive him forward and down as he buckles and kind of hangs out for a second before his body catches up and, and lands to the ground, I can draw and finish him, right? So it's one of these things where it's, it's not about pain. It's about what it creates. Pain typically creates a flinch response. So I have to take this to a much higher level to cause a flinch response in a way that causes his body 
to kind of lock up on itself so he hangs out for half a second. That gives me a window to hit something else, right? But just hitting something to hit it, okay? And also, a lot of these points that people tend to focus on, they're both they're both hurting and healing points. Right? Most of them, you know, the ones that we're using, right, to control somebody, damage somebody, or whatever, right? They're the same ones used by shiatsu practitioners and all that to heal and, and whatnot, right? So, but temporary immobilization, okay? And then there's a category of technique, uh, uh, kusho or techniques and attacks that create, uh, let's see, we'll call this short-term disability. Okay, short-term disability. I don't mean you're gonna collect a check, okay? All right, short-term disability. What this means is I've damaged something or tweaked something in a way that for a couple of days, maybe a week or so, he's not gonna have full function of that part and he's not going to be um, very mobile. I'll give you an example. Uh, a bunch of years ago, right, back in the 80s, right, because I am that old, uh, I was a military policeman. I was stationed uh, with the United States Army in what was then West Germany, right? And one of the guys in my unit, really, really tall guy, uh, we were having this discussion about pressure points and all that. And this is a time when, you know, I focused here too, okay? But we're supposed to grow, not get a whole bunch of, again, not get a list of things, memorize it and go, I mastered it. I got it. We're good. No, a master has gone beyond what everybody else thinks is it. Okay. But anyway, so we're having this little discussion and I'm showing pressure points and stuff. He's like, wow. Ow, ooh, oh, right. Well, anyway, this guy goes out one night with a bunch of other guys and comes back in and I'm, I've got the night off. I'm in what we call the day room, which is basically the, the rec room kind of thing. Right. Watching TV. And he comes stumbling in with some friends. He'd been out on the town, right? Had probably more than a couple of beers because he was way tall, right? And comes in and, hey, there's Miller, no, 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 right? He knows this stuff. Hey, dude, show him this thing. And I said, it's not going to work today, right? You're inebriated. It's not going to work. No, 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 man, hit it. You know your stuff. Hit. It's not going to work, right? It's, and, and if I do it, to the degree to make it work, you're not going to be able to use your hand for a couple of days. No, no, no. I mean, whatever. Now you're bragging. And look, so I press on it and I said, see, look, this is the same way I did it the other day. No, you must be hitting it wrong. No, I'm not hitting it wrong. Right. Well, just, just do it harder, man. And I, I pressed, right. Knowing where I was, where I was getting in there. Right. Pressed. He goes, ah, I must not be working today. You no, know, it's working. You better massage and stress your hand because tomorrow things are not going to be, be feeling so great. No, no, no. Right. Sure enough. Next morning he gets up. Can't move my hand. There are a whole lot of other four letter expletives that he was using. But the whole idea was. He didn't feel it in the moment because of that, but ends up with this for a couple of days. Couldn't make a fist. Couldn't couldn't use his thumb well. Right. Because the area was damaged. Right. The nerve uh, was damaged and, and the, the soft tissue right? Was damaged, right? So short term, short term disability where I'm, I'm making it so this guy can't get me because if I'm only focused on pain, or I'm only focused on a temporary in the moment immobilization. Here's, here's where most people screw up in their techniques, right? I knock the guy down or I throw him. And then mentally, I break from that and go, Oh, okay, I'll punch you now, man. The hell's what the hell's a real attacker doing next? Well, yeah, I know, but we're just like training. Yeah. As you train, so too you will right, act on the street. So when I put this guy down and I'm backing away, I want to back away holding my attention on him for a good extra two, three seconds and then disengage both physically and mentally to a point where he, he would have to do more to get at me, right? Paying attention to this kind of stuff, right? So this right here, right, both in the moment – and for a couple of days makes it more difficult for him to get his nary ass off the ground and come back into the fight with all his faculties. Okay. But this, uh, the way it's the way my research has shown and all that, this can go out to a week, 10 days, whatever. Right. But it, you know, the body heals, right. You know what it's like going to the gym and doing your thing. And then a couple of days, oh, I think I overdid the squats. I, okay. Same kind of idea. Right. And then the fourth one, right. We're going to call this one uh, long term, but I'm going to call this hidden effects. 
people are going to want to start like typing in like, oh, that's Dim Mac. That's the death touch and all that. Remember what they considered Dim Mac and death touch back in the day was the modern science of the day couldn't fix some of these things. And matter of fact, the science of the day had no idea that certain things were happening, let alone that could be fixed. OK, so be careful holding on to a bunch of this stuff. I'm not saying that kind of stuff doesn't exist because Hatsumi Sensei uh, has taught me about uh, psycho-emotional effects from some of these things. Uh, we've hit pressure points on certain people and they've had this flashback to a death in the family or whatever. Next thing you know, they're just crying for half an hour because they're having this emotional overwhelm because we hit this trigger release, right? Um, anyway, do some research in shiatsu and things like that, uh, other types of body work. And, and recognize how that kind of stuff happens, right? So long-term uh, hidden effects, okay? So what this means is I've done something, right? It may or may not have heard in the moment. It may or may not have done any of this in the moment, but down the line, they're much older. Next thing you know, right? They're starting to have problems with breathing, lung, that kind of thing. That's why it's important to have safe training. And I don't mean that we can't do our thing, right? And that it always has to be soft, training kind of thing, right? But if you if you don't understand this stuff is going on, right, you could actually be damaging yourself or your partner long term. Okay. So we have to be careful, right? So anyway, so when we're looking at at Q show at these pressure points, right, there's different effects that we're looking at creating. Right. So this is one way to kind of look at it. I just want to get this thing out there so that we get the idea that this is not magic and it's not just you know, goofball. Oh, I can make that hurt. I can make that hurt. I, yeah, okay. Right. I can tell stories and make your best friend hate you and leave you and make that hurt in your heart. Okay. Why? Because we have pressure points in our lives too. Okay. I love when people get on, uh, uh, I put a video or something on, uh, on YouTube or, you know, whatever. Right. And so, like, oh, this guy's fat. He can't do things. He's bald. He's old. He's what? Okay. Great. So you're what? Rock solid, healthy, juice in the morning, all that kind of stuff. Fantastic, right? What's your financial state like? What's your relationship state like? What's your job status like? All those kind of things, right? So ego likes to gravitate to the stuff that we're really good at and then hold that out to show how everybody else is wrong. But we have, we have pressure points not on our body but in our lives that are causing a whole shitload of pain, temporary immobility, short-term disability, or the inability to, to function well because the anxiety or the stress or whatever shuts us down, okay? Don't forget, as a ninja, you're not just focusing on this thing, right? You want to attack somebody? You better know more than about attacking their body because some people are too damn strong for you to attack physically. Don't ever forget that, right? Ninja tactics developed the way they did because small number of us, big number of them. Guess what? Can't do things the same way. Right? They own strength, they own positioning, they own supplies, they own resources. Yeah, what don't they own? Okay, anyway, all right. So, we'll, so we just, again, just glance over the effects very, very quickly here because that's, that's gonna take a long, long time. Each one of these things uh, takes some time, but you know what? I'm not here to cover all that stuff. Um, uh, you know, everybody's, everybody, I mean, Google, Pinterest, whatever, right? There are these people have uploaded all these graphs, right? Here's the, here's the Koto Ryu 42 or 49 Kyusho. Here's the Tagagi Ocean chart. Here's the whatever, right? Okay. I highly recommend that you take that chart, which is drawn way back in the day before Admiral Perry brought Western medicine to Japan. And you start, you get yourself a good pictorial anatomy book. Now I've got this giant thing because I can use it in class and everybody doesn't have to like crowd in when I get a class of like 25 people, right? They, they don't have to be huddling over each other trying to find things. It's just this bigger thing. I found it at a like a discount outlet or something like that for, I don't know what the hell was it. I don't know, 10 bucks or something because I wouldn't have bought it for less than that. I don't know. Anyway, so, but what you want to do is take those charts. Uh, let's find a good page here. I probably should have um, yeah. Anyway, so you you take those Q show on the on the hand drawn charts and find it on here. One of the benefits I had right of having Hatsumi Sensei as my teacher is he was a damn doctor. So when I got 
correspondence from them or these uh, newsletters came out and stuff like that, right? There'd be a photocopy, right, of this ancient chart that everybody wants to stick to because I only do it the traditional way. Screw you. Anyway, so <laughs> hate me for more things. Anyway, so the, there's this picture of the chart and the point, and then right next to it is a um, is a photocopy of something like a, a picture out of Gray's Anatomy or something like that, pointing where he's showing us the the actual nerve or the nerve bundle or whatever that was being attacked. Right? Um, I I dive into stuff. If my teacher says learn something, then I, I make the mistake of learning it more than just surface level. Right? So I've always had things like this, Grey's Anatomy and that kind of book and all that. And then one of my students a bunch of years ago, probably, wow, where are we? Shit. Two, three decades ago, he was going through medical school and he finished this one term and he didn't need it anymore and gifted me his medical school anatomy book. Okay. So trigger warning, because we all feel the need to do that shit so we don't get sued in today's world or YouTube or whoever decides they're going to shut us down because, oh, right, that unner unnerved people. If you're talking about pressure points in martial arts and you're triggered by things, I can't help you. Okay? Put your balls back on or your girl parts back on, whatever, right? And, and do the do, right? So anyway, so different, right? So if I know that this point right here, this chemo uh, uh, point right here, okay, is actually a, an opening in the, in the muscle wall or a thinning in the muscle wall where I can access the phrenic nerve, which comes out of the back of your brain back here behind the ear, down the side of the neck, along with the other bundle, right? With carotid, uh, artery, jugular vein, all kinds of other things. The What else is in there? The vagus nerve, bunch of stuff, right? It comes down here, goes under the clavicle, runs down my chest wall and plugs in to my diaphragm on this side. Now, when somebody says, if you hit this point right here, like it stalls their breathing, it screws up their breathing rhythm. What the hell does that mean? Because if you're just parroting it back, you have no freaking clue. When I hit that nerve, it causes the diaphragm on that side to stall. Your diaphragm is the big freaking muscle that makes you breathe. Okay. It's the cord. It's the plug from the brain to the muscle. There's one on the other side. OK, so knowing that be really, really cool. But then, OK, phrenic nerve, where the hell's the phrenic nerve? Where does that count? Right. So the phrenic nerve is actually uh, let's see, it's right here. It's this nerve, just this one bundle right here. I've got another book where they're all colored if I'm looking at, at something very, very specific. Right. But there's this whole bundle. So which one does what? But anyway. Right. So. All right. So if you haven't already passed out because you just looked at something you didn't want to see. Um, anyway. So if, if I or another teacher says, I will cut that open, reach in and pull out some wires, I know what wires I'm pulling out and I know what it does. OK, anyway. Right. So uh, you can take this as far or as as little as you want. All right. It's up to you. All right. So what I want to take a look at, what I was talking about when I when I put all this out and I, I told everybody about this class, when I was talking about four types of Q show. What I'm actually talking about are. The the structure of the point that makes it weak, right? So what's the best way to attack that point, okay? What causes the pain, right? Why would it be damaged to the point where you get temporary immobilization or whatever? <clears throat> and again, I'm not gonna throw a whole bunch of these things out here. I might mention a couple, but this is for you to do research. What I'm doing is, is, is hopefully expanding your, your knowledge base so that you can carry this farther, all right? It's not my job to learn it, right? It's my job to point you in the right direction, right? That's, students get that shit wrong all the time, right? Well, it's your job to, to teach me this stuff. That's right. My job ends at teaching it faithfully so that you have the opportunity to learn it. It's your job to do all the extra work to make sure you end up not only learning it, but owning it. It's not my job to motivate you. It's not my job to kick you in the ass to make sure that you're practicing. Not my job to do any of that stuff. My job is to take what I have learned mixed with my real world experience of using this shit against real people on the street. Like the guy that I said about being drunk, right? There's certain techniques, certain pressure points that are not going to work. And there's other ones that will go right past all that filtering, right? Remember one night again, I'm, uh, let's see, I was in South Korea at that point. And, um, 
we got called to uh, this this main gate. We we were uh, my military police unit was uh, responsible for all these smaller groups and 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 areas and and installations. We didn't have one big compound, so we were stationed in one. But you know, all the ones that were around that were kind of small only had like a, a unit or two or whatever, right? So my partner and I get called one night to go to this main gate because this cab had rolled up with this drunk GI in it and they couldn't get him out of the cab. They couldn't wake him up, couldn't anything. Right. So I show up and, you know, get in there and I'm trying to wake him up. Right. And nothing's working. So I reach in and I tag a pressure point. Right. And I went, I need you to come out of the car. And I only needed to happen for an instant so that he would move in that direction. And he was slurring. At one point, I think he confused me with his girlfriend, but his eyes weren't open. So don't make any freaking wisecracks. I, I know we'll all laugh about it. Anyway, right? So what I did was I said, I love you too, honey. And I hit this pressure point. And he went, whoa. And as his body stiffened up from that, I used an arm bar to pass him off to gate security and said, anything else? You good? Cab driver, you good? Everybody have a good night. Hop back in my car. I'm back on patrol. Right. Nobody got arrested. Nobody, whatever. Right. Because we just need to get this guy in bed and cab driver can't make extra money if we got somebody that's living dead in the back seat. Right. So anyway. All right. So let's take a look at four categories. The fifth one would be the ones for me. Right. Resuscitation, all that that I covered earlier. Not going to go into those that not, not for this class. This one is really focused around these four types of weak points for types of Q show, not how you're damaging it, not what you're causing short term, long term, whatever, but how to affect it, how to cause the pain or immobilization or whatever. And that's pretty much what I'm going to stick to right now. Pain, immobilization, that kind of thing. I'm not worrying about if he can still use his hand a week from now. I'm worried about him not killing me right now. Okay. So we'll stick to those two pain, temporary immobilization. Okay. So four types, right? This is where most people think. So I'm, I'm always going to start where people tend to think uh, anyway, right? So those that can be pressed, right? So really, what we're really talking about is leverage. Lev, lev, leverage? What the hell am I writing? Anyway, leverage. Okay, leverage, right? Pressed or leverage, right? So Nagade point, Hoshi point, uh, I guess Kimon, but that's really a whole different uh, kind of thing. Um, uh, the, the earlobe, uh, all kinds of things, right? Okay. So things that can be pressed, right? Those are the ones that most people think of. I press into it, causes pain. He says, owie, let's go and goes about his business, right? Okay. Uh, another uh, group, right? While this group, many in this group can be pressed, you have to have the person in a kind of a pinned position where they can't move to absorb that pressure that you're putting on. OK, some you can you can press and you can uh, in this case, right, we can strike it. OK, so pressed ones uh, covered those striking ones like the temple, uh, menbu, right, center of the center of the head, uh, sternum, those kind of things. Right. This this key mold that I was talking about earlier, right, taking the shitan can pop, hit that. They don't get their breathing rhythm back until their body comes to rest and resets. Right? It's just a long-winded saying of as long as he's staying in the fight and in survival mode, it's going to take a little while for this to come, to come back. And since our, our uh, reference is always four moves or less, 10 seconds or less to get this whole damn self-defense situation over, which is why I don't have arguments with MMA guys and, and those competition fighters, two minutes, five minutes, I have never had an attack situation or an altercation or whatever on the street go that long. Holy shit. Are you kidding me? Right. Anyway, so uh, they can be hit. Right. They can be struck. So the temple is one of these ones where I can press into it or I can hit, but I have better access to it. There's other ones, too, where remember I said it may not hurt uh, or whatever. Right. You can press pretty hard into the ocular ridge. Right. That's this ridge that goes around your eye socket. You can press into that. It can become you know, push really freaking hard for it to become, um, you know, mildly irritating. But take a copal can or a boshi can or your knuckles or whatever and just lightly tap on on that ocular ridge. That'll cause somebody to not just do a do a flinch, right? But they're gonna close that eye. 
uh, all that kind of stuff, right? Okay, uh, that kind of thing, right? So there, there are these other things, okay? Uh, don't forget, like floating rib, right? There's a lot of things that most people think of with hitting and, and all that kind of stuff, but they don't think of it, of it being a sensitive area, okay? The goading, right? These points around the, the, the uh, center of the body, the pit of the stomach, kind of around the belly button kind of thing, right? People always know, you know, if I hit somebody in a bread basket, I can drop them like a sack of bricks. It's a cue show, right? But I don't have to hit like a boxer, right? I can move in with a boshi can or shikan can, whatever, right? Okay. And sometimes the thing, the bundle of nerves that you think you're going after, right, are just too far inside. Like going, going into koi. I'm going to back up here just a little bit, right? Flip up my jacket. Oh, it's not going to matter. I'm all in black anyway, right? But the koi, let me get a different color. Koi. Koi means voice, right? Because when you hit it, ah, weird noises come out, right? But it's this point. I'm just going to show. Uh, can you see the blue, right? Right here. Can you see the blue against that? Shit, I need something different. Hopefully this will work, right? There you go, okay? It's in the connection where the leg plugs into the torso, okay? You're going after this nerve bundle in here, right? So if I hit that, boom. Right? There's a lot of uh, a lot of techniques in Kyoko to you, uh, well, in shit, almost all the lineages, right? Where you punch that hip socket, right? That causes this flinch response to get somebody back and down. It doesn't hurt that badly, if at all. But there's a flinch response as the body's trying to save itself that puts them into this position of lock, being locked and fighting gravity and themselves and whatever, right? That they can't they can't do a whole lot in that quarter of a second, and then you're free to knock, you know, hit something else, okay? Uh, the the toki and the kyogi points, right, uh, on the foot, especially uh, toki, right? You can you can just kind of take your foot, stomp on, you know, foot point, whatever, and it causes this kind of thing. It hurts, but it creates this, again, suspended animation kind of thing. All right, oh, shit, I got this in my hand now. Anyway, uh, so the third type of point are points that, uh, are gouged or um, clawed or scraped, okay? So they're sensitive in a whole different way, right? So now I'm talking about the eyeball. Yeah, but since that can be pressed, yeah, I'm talking about like scooping in between the ocular socket and the eyeball and moving it to the side. I don't mean just always pressing on the eyeball, okay? Uh, clawed. The facial nerves right along here, right? Take this shakuken and just come in. Maybe I've already hit the temples and now I'm just going to scrape down on this. So the response, remember the human body responds 180 degrees away from whatever danger or pain it's dealing with. So if I do this, they tend to drop. And again, it's another way to lock them up, okay? Uh, it could be grabbing the whole ear, right? I could hit the ear itself because pressing in around this cartilage, again, unless the guy's pinned, not so bad, right? But if I hit it, hit the, oh, the cartilage of the ear, so the ear can, can show up in a couple of places, right? It can be struck, it can be pressed or leveraged, right? But it can also be like just scraped, right? It can be clawed at, right? It can be gouged, right? Um, here's another one. This, one, this one's kind of hidden, right? Does everybody know about this piece of tissue that's in here, right? Connecting, I don't even know that I have one anymore. Connecting the lower lip to the lower gum line. You have one up here for the upper lip to the upper gum line as well, okay? So uh, that's in there, right? Okay. So again, if people are only focusing on what they're touching, they're going to miss some things. Because I learned a long time ago that you can touch areas that are connected to the thing that's actually the sensitive point. So in this case, if I take the side of my index finger and the tip of my thumb, and I catch on the corner of my mouth over here, right along the mouth, the 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 end, the lip line, right, right at that corner there, and over here on the other side, right here. You know that little phobia thing you got there, right there. Phobia means a cup-like depression. You got one up here. Mine's covered up with hair, right? You got one down here. Those kind of things, right? So if I catch this way, and I bring them together, so that I'm not going to do it hard to myself, so that that phobia, that dip in pops out okay it inverts what you just did was rip that tissue away from the gum line see it's hidden right okay so things are not always what they seem to be because the pressure to the to the corners of the mouth 
that doesn't hurt. Now I can go in farther and press in to the gum line at the eye teeth, top or bottom. That's different. They can be struck. They can be pressed, that kind of thing, right? But this one where I can go in, remember, things can be follow-up. So I go in for this one. He flinches back so that I don't catch this point or he feels the pain. And as he flinches back, I just scoop that lip and pull quickly. You catch that and just do move your hand like you're throwing his lip on the floor. He'll follow you at least half, if not all the way down. Okay. So gouge, clawed, or scraped. Okay. And then the last one, I was tempted, and I'll show you what I have in my notes, right? I was tempted to just call this miscellaneous because I, I, it's difficult to kind of get this across. But then it kind of popped into my head that what I'm really talking about are things that are manipulated. Okay. So that, that thing here could be the same kind of thing, right? Manipulated uh, or broken. Okay. Manipulated or broken. Okay. So uh, if I, Hatsumi says he does this kind of stuff all the time, right? Where, well, he used to, he's retired now, right? Um, now I do it all the time. Somebody's falling out of a grip or whatever, or, you know, I, I had something for a, for a wrist reversal or something and they're pulling away and I, I can move in to kind of jam and then, right, hyper extend their, their joint back as I'm reaching for the back of the hand and then I can control them like a joystick kind of thing, right? But what I'm really doing is, tearing at the at the connectors right in the joint right uh there's a technique that we teach people in mod one starting off from white belt it's a joint manipulation called um oyagoroshi right uh, crushing the parent because all the fingers have names in japanese right so oyagoroshi is take the heel of your hand and this is about to get me covered this way right so you take the heel of the hand snag the uh the tip of the finger wrap around this part right here and then make a fist, not like this, like this. So you're holding and walking the heel of your hand toward the toward the other hand, right? So the big mistake that everybody makes is they try they're trying they think that I'm making the thumb hyperflex. And while that will be sensitive for some people, that's not what I'm doing, right? I'm positioning this and then moving my hand in a way that I'm taking that piece of finger bone and blowing it through that joint. That's a weak point. Okay. So there's that. Um, for the broken ones, um, your ankle bones, right? The ankle and wrist are pretty much built the same, but your ankle bones inside your ankle, and I'm not going to draw this to scale, but inside your ankle, above your, you know, your toe bones, right? Your foot bone comes up like this. Everybody knows about the knob of the, the ankle right here, which is really a part of that bone there. But in here, you've got these marble esque kind of bones that rest on top of the heel bone, right? And then you got the arch and whatever, right? So these bones right here were primary targets for swordsmen and spearmen way back in the day, okay? So I stab into that. Now you could stab into the, into the foot and break the uh, metatarsals, right? And of course that's gonna, that's gonna you know, cause somebody to uh, wince and all that. But these bones right here, they're really, really, really strong kind of right they're strong in a kind of in a different way right what you have is a it's kind of like an egg right but on steroids right you had this really 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 thin calcium shell and the material inside of it is kind of pulpous and spongy and stuff like that right you know, again look it up in the in the in the in the books and stuff right so when these things are impacted or pierced or cut when it when that shell breaks, it kind of pops like popcorn. Not exactly the same, so don't like take it to the bank and go. You said like popcorn. Look, I'm giving you an analogy, right? That cracks, that kind of thing happens, right? It, and that destabilizes the whole thing and brings somebody down. Okay, so am I going to bend down, get on my hands and knees, and stab it around his ankle? No, but if I'm on the job or I'm in hiking boots or whatever. And I slam into those bones. A little different, okay? So, but when they break, the person loses complete stability, right? So now we're talking about, what are we talking about? Short and long-term disability, right? Because they have to, in today's world, they can put artificial ones back in there to rebuild your ankle. Uh, back in the day, crippled for life, okay? So again, there's this whole range of things, right? But again, what I wanted to look at 
And what I wanted to get people away from was calling these damn things pressure points. They're not point. We, uh, they're not strong. They're not pressure points. Okay. You can apply pressure to some of them. Okay. They're weak points. They're sensitive points. That kind of thing. Right. It implies kind of like a gateway to get in. Right. So the, what I want to do is expand these things out so people can get away from one pain only and two. Does that hurt? Does that hurt? Does that hurt? Some of these don't hurt, but they do what they're supposed to do because we understand that it's a weakness that we're exploiting and we're not being some six-year-old running around like, ooh, I got a trick. I know something you don't know. That kind of bullshit, right? Get away from that, right? Let's get to the mature level of training and, and ability, right, so that we, we're actually attaining to a mastery level and not some – dipshit teenager running around who's got an answer or two for every common thing that happens and think they freaking know everything, right? It's way too many of those people running around, students and teachers, right? Let's get away from that, right? So these are the four I was talking about, right? There's points that are, there are weak points that can be pressed or leveraged, right? Levered. There's points that can be struck or have to be struck, right? Like the sternum, right? I really have to pin somebody down to lay a, a elbow on them or whatever, where you can't move before that's, that's as painful, painful as I'd like, right? And as much pressure as I could put on that xiphoid process, that little triangular arrowhead kind of thing at the bottom of the sternum, right? That's a, a lot of these things are, are uh, early warning systems that something's coming into life-sustaining systems on the body, okay? So that's why, that's why it hurts or causes a flinch response or whatever, right? I could push on that. Maybe if I get enough pressure on it, right? I could do some damage, but if I hit it, Okay. At the very least, it's going to cause a lot of pain and cause the muscles, the girdle muscles in the torso to seize up, right? They don't move so well, let alone breathe, right? Hit it a different way, I'm going to snap it off, and there's a whole bunch of extra stuff behind it that if I n even nick it, we knew him well, okay? There's ones that can be gouged, clawed, or scraped, right? And there's other, these other ones that can be manipulated or broken, Right. So if you start thinking of pressure points, weak points in that context and get away from this surface level thing, right, that it has to cause pain. Uh, it, these are things you press on. Right. Pressure points. These are things I press. No. OK. Anyway, so that's it for today. Uh, we are, again, doing another virtual training on Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, the link down here, where is that? The link right there, right? Friday virtual training. If you go to that, uh, again, I stopped doing like free webinars and all that. I mean, for Christ's sake, I'm doing these things for like half an hour to almost an hour sometimes. These things on Wednesday, this is it, right? So not selling anything afterwards. This is a whole training. You can take this and run with it and, and you know, start getting anatomy books and doing internet searches and finding things and stop memorizing I almost said fucking, but they would probably block me for that, right? So I almost said freaking, right? Points, right? Um, people really piss me off when they're... They, it's, it's one thing to be ignorant of something because you don't know. It's another thing to, like, go out of your way to limit yourself. Like, I've been told by people, yeah, I know there's more than that, but you know what? Like, this is good enough for me. You just, you, you did all that work to get to the path. The entrance to the path, and this is where you're going to stop. Yeah, because, you know, I, I got a first degree, black, first degree black belt. I mean, black belt, everybody else just thinks that if I have a black belt, man, I can kick their ass. Yeah, but who can kick your ass? Anyway, all right. Um, where was I going to go with that? That uh, Oh, let me tell you one last story to close things off, right? I was in East Super Sensei's Dojo in Japan a couple of years ago. And uh, we're doing this one kata that has an attack. To this Nagare point, for those of you who don't know it, here's a freebie, okay? Go from the center of the wrist, right where a watch would be, straight up to the crook of the elbow this way, and back off two or three fingers, and there's this point right here. It's called Nagare. Well, in some lineages, it's called Nagare, right? Okay? Here. It's not Hoshi, Omote Hoshi or Uda Hoshi or uh, I don't remember the one that's in here. But anyway, Nagare, right? So I teach mod one, white belts this thing, right? This way. Okay, so we're doing this kata with this technique. Okay, 
And like, I'm in a, I'm in a room with like six Dons and above. I don't even know if I made my Dai Shihan at that point. So at that point I would have been uh Judon Kamenkyo, what all the ignorant people call 13th degree. Um, but anyway, right. So, uh, we're doing this right. And these people are like, awesome. I mean, they're like collapsing and, and everything. And I'm looking at Isuk Sensei and he's looking at me and hmm, he's smiling and stuff. Well, these people, remember, these people are close to 10th down, some are above, that kind of thing, right? They're running around taking freaking pictures and all that. And I'm like, my brain goes, oh, Sensei's knew something I don't know. I know the point. I know how to do what I do. The way these people are responding, oh, show me, right? So the code word in his in his dojo is experience. So that's what I said. Sensei, experience. He said, of course. He hits his point, and it hurt like hell. But it didn't hurt any more than I'm used to. And I didn't flinch. I just went, okay. And he said, good? I said, yeah, good. And he, he kept holding on to it, and everybody's like, doesn't it hurt? <laughs> it hurts like hell. You sure he has it right? Yeah, he has it right. Oh, man, you must be really strong. And what I said was, no, it's just pain. And Sensei stopped and said, that's it. Right? As a matter of fact, we just posted something uh, online for the school. It's a quote from Hatsumi Sensei. You must get past the wound to be able to win the fight. You're going to take shots, right? But I thought he was doing something to these people. And they're like running around taking pictures of somebody's red spot on their arm and all that. And he and I look at each other and it was, wasn't until after class that we're like, where the hell have these people been to get to that rank and don't know that or how many other points? What the hell are people doing? Right? So anyway, right? Be careful what you know. Because it's what you don't know that you don't know that is either limiting you or that's going to get you killed. Okay? And pride goes before the fall. All right. That's it. Hopefully, you'll make it in for the Friday class. It's only $4.99, for God's sake, right? It's a 90-minute class that we're going to take this and just kind of do a deep dive into it and show people how to, how to insert pressure points or where they're actually, where they actually are and how to uh, use pressure points to break down resistance and strength and to, or to maximize a technique, make it work even easier for you. That kind of thing. Right. As Trey Sensei always said, another level of control, right? That kind of thing. So hopefully you'll join us. If not, you got a whole extra training right here. Uh, and either way, Friday or no Friday, hopefully I'll see you next Wednesday. That's it. Talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.